with John Paynar on Times Radio. And the Times has its own world in depth, a story told by one of the paper's foreign team. You can read that now if you're a subscriber, and if not, well, just go to times.radio forward slash subscribe. Protests are expected in New York as the president of Iran is set to address the UN. Hundreds of women have taken to the streets of Tehran to burn their hijabs after the brutal death of Mam- Masa Amini. We can talk now to Mariam Namazi, political activist and campaigner. Mariam, hi. Good afternoon to you, Mariam. Good afternoon. Uh, good, thank you for joining us, uh, Mariam. Just get us up to up to up to date on this story. Many of us would have seen the pictures of demonstrations in in Iran over these. A lot of women taking a great deal of risk with those demonstrations. Just what is going on there? Yeah, well, uh, a few days ago. Um Masa Amini, who's a 22-year-old woman, she was visiting from Iranian Kurdistan, she was visiting Tehran, and she was arrested by the morality police. And of course, uh, morality police are notorious. They arrest women who are considered improperly veiled. She was veiled, um, you know, given the fact that it's compulsory in, in, in Iran. Nonetheless, they arrested her and in a couple of hours, she was in a coma and in hospital. She died on the 16th of September. And uh, what um, x-rays show is that she had her skull fractured. She was beaten so badly um, as a result of um, her arrest that she died. And because of, of this, it has sparked a huge protest movement in Iran. And, of course, it's such a huge tragedy, but also the the beauty of the protest is that one of the main slogans is women, freedom, and uh, uh, women, uh, sorry, women, life, and freedom. And so it just shows how much this case has brought people together, men and women standing alongside each other and protesting for women's rights and, of course, against Islamic rules, theocratic rules. Uh, One of the other main slogans is we want an end to dictatorship, we want an end to an Islamic state. So we've seen the pictures, many of us, of of those women in the the streets taking off their hijabs, waving them around, chanting their their, their protest slogans and so on. Yes, I mean, this is hugely important for people to understand that the veil is compulsory in Iran. It is punishable by imprisonment and fine if you're not properly veiled, even if you are veiled, but you're not properly veiled. And, you know, millions of women actually uh, throughout the years have been arrested and harassed and beaten. Um, Just in April, a man was shot four times for trying to defend his wife who was being arrested by Marathi police. So it's hugely abusive. And they've stepped up their efforts uh, given the fact that the president of Iran, Raisi, uh, asked for them to step up their efforts in arresting women. And so in this context, you have women removing their veils. They have been doing it for, for many years now, but we're seeing more of this now. They're removing their veils. They're even setting their veils uh, alight. Uh, and so, again, what is important to understand is this is a direct challenge to yes. theocratic rule. It's a direct challenge to one of the important rules of this government to manage and control and suppress people. You know, their their first target is women. And interestingly enough, women are at the forefront of this protest. Yes. And men are standing alongside women, you know, shouting pro-women slogans. It is really in a sense, a feminist uprising um, opening uh, before our very eyes. Yes. It's something that is new, I think, not just in the Middle East uh, and North Africa, but across the world, to have men and women united uh, shouting slogans in defense of women's rights. How have the authorities, the, the morality police and other civil uh, authorities, reacted to this? Because the, the, the women protesting and the men alongside them, I guess, too, are showing a good deal of courage and taking a huge risk. It is, it is very courageous. The, the, the security are shooting at protesters. Several protesters have been killed. Very many of them have been injured. Uh, because Raisi, the president of Iran, is now in New York, the internet has not been shut down yet. We know that that's something that they do in uh, protests a few years ago. Um, in in November protests, uh, they shut down the internet for three days and they killed 1,500 people during that time. So there is this concern about the internet being shut down 
Uh, but the reality is now the protests have become so widespread. It is difficult from all the v reports that are coming out. It is difficult for the security forces to control it. I think what's important for us outside of Iran is to support the people of Iran, the women of Iran in this fight. It is a fight that applies to all of us because, you know, we are seeing the rise of the religious right, not just Islamism, but also other right, religious right movements that are creating havoc across the world. Women are their first victims, their first targets. And it's important to see movements where women are at the lead, uh, challenging, um, you know, Islamism and a religious theocracy. So I think solidarity with this movement is hugely important. Pressure on the British government not to continue its relations with this government. This is a, a government. I mean, Raisi himself is wanted for crimes against humanity. He was in the death commission that killed thousands of political prisoners in the 80s, and he gave the direct order for the stepped-up uh, uh, arrests of, of women um, uh, by the morality police. So yes. he is directly responsible for Massa Amini's death and the death of many others. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you so much for, for sharing your, your thoughts on that and giving us such a vivid picture of the well, the action and the protests that, that are being, being taken by these obviously very brave women against the authoritarian regime in, in Iran. Thank you. Now, coming up shortly here 